I asked her to put it in, put the assignments in the Google Docs, and I'm looking at Google Docs, and I don't see them. Uh, did you check Google Classroom? Let me check the classroom, see if she put them in there. She might see, have. I'm, see, the problem is, is that my stream, let me see what's going on here. I don't want that. I want that. I'm by the way, hey, Larry. Yes. Long time to see. Yeah. How are you doing? Very good. I was going to ask you guys. I want to wait until everybody gets in. Oh, it looks like I have to admit a bunch of people here. Hold on. Uh, imagine, imagine if you could just select all then um, admit. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> I t oh, hi, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. Let me get everybody up here. Hi, Jordan. I mute my and yes, I can only hear out of this side of my headset. I don't. I don't know why. That must be annoying. Yeah, it is. So uh, there's a few people I uh, I know. Sam, how are you doing? And I'm doing good. Yeah, you've got one of those headsets that make everything sound like it's going to talk forever. I don't know why that is. Zoom has been <laughs> doing a lot of that weird stuff lately. Um, kind of where's Clad? He's 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 uh he's down here sitting here playing around. What is he doing? And playing around what <laughs> i'm just kidding he's got his uh his uh, little emoji up there let's see uh, hey, oh you mean the sonic picture sonic yeah it's got of his course sonic that's picture. that's pretty much the typical clad so so guys fill me in i know that there was supposed to, we were supposed to go over journal right today and but i don't know if that was the afternoon yeah, that's during uh, 220 Zoom meeting. So you guys already have the journal right in there. She gave me, I don't understand why they're not coming up in Google Google Classroom. Let me minimize you guys again and take a look here. Recent, Let's see if anybody's in recent. No, it's not in there either. Uh, about my drive. Got Zoom codes. And hello, John. Hello. I have the journal prompt if you want me to just read it to you. Is that John? Are you one of the aides? Yeah. Hi, John. I, I didn't know who, who um, Sherry's aides were. She said there's three of you guys. Yeah, it's there's really you. weird. She, she sent me the email. Let me admit people here. There's John, Yvonne. There's John. Then, here. Hey, hey, John. Hey, hang on hi. a sec. Let me, uh, uh, let me find you and see if I can. Uh, make co-hosts. I'm going to help you make you co-host so you can get in and help me about out here when needed. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Da, 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 yes. Well, Sue okay, is you're in. Coming in. Hi, Sue. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we all wish you're in San Francisco. Don't we? Hi, Sue. Good Larry. Uh, Hi, Larry. I'm, I'm in waiting. I'm in charge of the waiting room now. Uh -oh. I will admit oh, yeah, people. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, admit just all. start letting people in. <laughs> um, there was. She sent. What's really frustrating is that that Sherry sent me an email with the docs that we were going to use. And I asked her to put them in uh, Google Classroom. And I'm not seeing it there. Hey, Sue. Cheers. <laughs> so I am technically not part of San Juan. So whenever I try to share a document, it doesn't work because I don't have a San Juan um, email. So if you wanted me to send it to you, I don't know if I could. Um, I'm outside of the San Juan email. So do you do you have the uh, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to talk about all the different scenarios. Do you have that doc? Uh, different workplace scenarios. Yeah, well, um, these journal prompts are pretty much workplace scenarios, so. Um, so, you know, what's weird is, is that I'm looking at my emails. 
and it's saying that I have eight emails, so I know they're there, and then I'm going to get to them, and it's just, hold on, let me check my email here. Oh, yeah, that's not computer. Fun. I'll try that. Let's see if it's in there. I'm trying to use my iPad because I I've got I'm working in Folsom Cordova as well, so I'm all over the place. Not Nathan. Folsom Cordova. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Join alternative host. She's got that. Hey, Larry. Good morning. How are you? Morning, Good, Larry. Larry. You know what? I can I can copy and paste it and put it in chat. Um, let me see. That that'd be helpful because then I whatever I can do I can pop it up on the screen. I, I don't know why she didn't put them in the Google Docs, but that's the let easiest me, uh, way. That way everybody can look at it as we go through. But I can also I, share the screen and put it up there. Can you, if you have the doc, and you're a co-host, you can also share your screen and show the doc, but you don't have the yeah. doc that I'm talking about, do you? I don't know. Don't understand why it disappeared of all things. And then also that email had her phone number on it. So I could, let me check archives. Let's see if it's in there. And then I hit archives and it's showing nothing. Morning, Yvonne. Sounds extremely frustrating. Morning. My name, my name, Yvonne. Good morning, Yvonne. I think so, Larry. The so thing I'm is, so uh, for um, when what Sherry does, she'll t start with the good mornings first. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. As a matter of fact, I was planning on doing it. It's just like you know, when I've got done with that, I wanted to be able to hit hit the ground running and go with these scenarios. And it's like really, I was just looking at this last night before I went to bed, and it's like now they're all gone. I just don't get it let me see um oh here we go hold on it's called what would you do yeah yep That's okay so so i have i have on my ipad the the uh, prompts i just wish that it's like it's she put it in a word doc so uh, anyway let's let's uh let me go back to the screen where everybody is and let's say our hellos this morning let's do that that's a lot more fun than trying to run around and find everything so from sue swanson everyone i apologize everyone i had my computer okay she's got that in her chat i want to Put up my 16 participants because I got to get everybody's role here today. I got to do that. Let's get that out of the way. So I got Andrew, Royce. Um, who's Bernsey? Who, who's your first name? That would be Devin. Devin. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. D-E-V-I-N, right? Uh, yes. Where'd he go? There he is. Yep. Devin, is that D? Oh, oh, that's right. Yep. Now I remember. I'm sorry. You got your email address up there underneath your name. That's why I was getting crazy. Eleanor, good morning. Hey, Larry. How are you, sweetie? Hi. Good. Uh, I'm, it's awesome to see all of you guys. Um, <laughs> Jonathan, how are you doing, buddy? I see you. How's it going? I'm, I love your smiling face. I, I missed your smiling face. Natasha is here. Good morning, Nathan. Where's Nathan? I'm looking around where there he is. Yeah, that's the one thing about um, Zoom or, or, or Microsoft Teams is, is that if you have a bad hair day, it's too bad. You're on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, good morning. Good morning. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Da, 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 da. And then, wait a oh, Tyler Platts. That's right. That's right. Tyler P. I know there's, I've got double names sometimes. Natasha, Nathan, Yvonne. Good morning, Yvonne. Is, is some of the, some of you are new this year. How's everybody enjoying 
virtual learning being new to a school, that's got to be double whammy, right? Yeah, it is. Not for me. I'm used to it, so. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but you're not new. I'm talking about the, the newbies, you know. That well, got... actually, I am pretty much new to product search, but, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just meant to the school because, uh, uh, see, Jordan, Sam. Type of learning is more... Sam, I always get Samantha. I want to say Samantha, but it's Sam. And let's see. So let's see. Let me call these names out. I got Andrew, Royce, Devin, Eleanor, Jonathan, Natasha, Nathan, Tyler, Yvonne, Jordan, Sam. Did I miss anybody? Oh, John, Andrew. Oh, what about me? Who's me? I'd oh, Clyde. Yeah. Stefan's not here. You're what? Stefan isn't here. Uh, oh, hey. yeah, I, I remember Stefan. He's not here. Nor if he if he pops in, John, just uh, let me know, and I'll put him down on the list. So, right. so here's the plan today, guys. What I'm going to do is we're, I'm doing this from home this morning, uh, our longer session, and then when we meet this afternoon, I'm going to go into the school because I got a couple of things I've got to do there. So I'll I'll be touching base with whoever's back with me in the afternoon is all of you guys back with me same people yeah we all are okay so, except for the staff except for who oh yeah staff's the not staff. yet. right so uh i'll be not in my office i'll be at school when i touch base with you guys later on today and then um uh we'll just finish up i guess we go to 245 from and is that right she the start time is 220 it's only like a 25 minute session yeah it's only 20 minutes it's only 20 minutes just for the end of the day part so, so what are you guys doing between like when we finish today at 10 20 up until until two o'clock are you guys in other classes no well it nope. depends some people have independent studies some people have different calls to make some people just have different things going on. Okay. But uh, but well, it's always the same is that at 1 p.m. Where are you going, Jonathan? Come back. Where are you going, Jonathan? At 1 p.m. we always have a one-on-one -on -one session with one of the other staff members, whether it be John, Sue, or Yvonne. Oh, okay. And it's not with, with Miss Sherry? No, not herself. Okay. You don't All right. Well, it's kind of, this is kind of weird. I've been, I've been um, I just wanted to give you guys a, an update on me. Um, I've, and then I'll get your check-ins from you guys. I have been, I started working at uh, Laurel Ruff um, last Friday in Miss Grace's class. And so what they've got me down is they've got me down for about, I don't know, maybe six or seven schools. I keep getting calls from other schools as well, but I'm trying to, my goal was is to try to just kind of be, you know, Laurel Ruff's sub during this pandemic time and, and be there to support you guys um mainly because i miss you guys you guys are awesome and also um i know that that uh these times are kind of tough being at home all the time so it's nice to have a familiar face and i kind of wanted to be able to do that too and then i'm also yeah uh, i don't know you guys probably didn't know aaron's story he's one of, he was one of the assistant soups for special ed he gave me a call probably in August saying that one of his teachers in their um, their uh, behavior classes at Sutter Middle School in Folsom um, was out with the COVID and was going to be out for over a month. So um, I've been filling in for his class for a couple of weeks. So I've been over at Folsom Cordova most of the most of the time since probably the first week in first week in September. So. Um, I'm trying to work my way back over to you guys, but um, that's what I've been doing. So um, let's do our check-ins. Andrew, what's up this morning? Uh, not much. I've been just practicing piano and also um, play, playing with my cats and all that. Uh -huh. And also hang out with Tyler going swimming. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> so you are so you are meeting up with some people in the classroom. You're talking about our Tyler here. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's nice. I mean, we live like really like right kind of. Well, I would say kind kind of close to each other, but it's not like right next to each other. You know. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. 
That's very nice. That's nice to. So the family's all, you know, everybody's fine with you guys meeting up and are you social distancing yeah. when you're together or is that how it's we're going? we're pretty much in a swimming pool sometimes yeah so well the chlorine helps and being out in the fresh air helps too so that kind of gives you a little bit of a, a buffer there well good 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 jordan quick, how are things going with you good question do you mean um smoky air no i mean covid air <laughs> but yeah smoke smoky air too yes that's there too Let's go to Jordan. I'm going across my screen, so that's how I'm calling people. Jordan, uh, go ahead and unmute mute yourself, sweetie. Going good, except I'm not a real, I'm kind of getting bored of the homeschool. And to me, I'm about ready to just go back because I'm getting bored of the homeschool. Yeah. I think that I think a lot of people are in that boat and they want to be able to go back. My, the latest I'm hearing, and I don't want to go into big detail. We can talk about it later if we have some time, but I have a feeling special ed's going to be back to school before anybody else. That's what I'm hearing in the rumbling. So, uh, just frozen. A heads up. Anything else, Jordan? Just hanging with family? Uh, going on Wednesdays, I go swimming after school with my younger cousin. And then with the smoky air, I choose to stay inside because I have asthma. And when you mix smoke and asthma together, it's no good. And not good, no, absolutely not. I have, I have, uh, when I was your age, I had a lot of asthma. As I've gotten older, it's gotten better. So you have that looking forward to as you get older. I think it, I think it's going to back off a little bit and not be so severe. Well, good, good. Well, stay safe, be careful. And on to Sam. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Just been working. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Where are you working? KFC. What? Say it again. KFC. Oh, you were working at Kentucky Fried. Yeah. It's my favorite chicken. So, Sam, you bring up a good point. It was a question that I was going to. Uh, is uh, is you guys aren't are you guys not going out for workability right now, or what's going on with that? I'm not in workability no more. Okay, so what we're doing today has nothing to do with workability. Is that correct? No, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was that was going to be my question to whoever. But you're staying healthy. Everybody in your family healthy. Sam. Yeah. Good. Yes. Good. Awesome. Devin. Mister. Mister. Quiet and reserved how are you doing buddy oh you're we don't hear you but check make sure your headphones and your mic are on can you hear me um it, it's on oh there you go yes so what's going on with you i'm doing um nothing just nothing Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got to get a job or something that's at home or around. I've been building things. You get doing any hobbies or anything? Um, listening to music. Oh, that's cool. Do you like to build? You work with your hands? Yes. Yeah, if you can do some woodworking right now, everybody's bird watching because they're stuck at home. So build some birdhouses and sell them in your driveway, man. You can make some money. That's an easy way to make money. I've been building, um, I built, rebuilt my fence and saw all of my leftover fence. I've been building um, flower, flower uh, pot kind of things for, for the garden and selling those. It's that entrepreneurial ship. You got to get out there and make some money and have, and keep yourself busy at the same time. 
you get a chance to do that and you got the right tools, it's very cool. All right, let's go to Natasha. You got your mic on off, off, sweetie. Turn, turn on and tell us hello, Natasha. Is she frozen? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good to meet you. I don't think I, I knew you from last I'm year. Good. Did we meet last year? No. Yeah, you, is this your this is your first year over at Laurel Ruff then? Um, no, actually, I graduated from Laurel Ruff in two thousand and sixteen. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So, what are you doing? Awesome. Are you are you uh, you just joining through this project search then? Not normally on campus. Yes. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's probably yeah, why I had to um, say. Yeah. All right. So Natasha is actually, I'm supporting Natasha and Jordan. They're older. Uh -huh. you know? But um, yeah. I'm doing um, job skills with them outside of class. So they're going, I'm, I go through another agency called Step Agency. Oh, I know Step, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I work for Step and um, I'm working with Jordan and Natasha and just oh, giving them assistance. That's fantastic. Yeah, well, it's as good well to, as it, helping it, others too. You know, it's kind of good to know that that those connections. Even uh, Natasha, I'm assuming that you're you're over 22, right? I'm 26 years old. Yeah, I was gonna say. So it's yeah. nice that you guys are keeping that attachment with the school and and uh, making sure that you've got using all your resources. That is so cool. I'm glad to hear you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah. How are you doing? Are you still into the into the big time gaming? <laughs> Well, with Andrew, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Well, how are you keeping yourself busy? Um, I know you're swimming. I hear that. <laughs> I've been bored a lot lately. Yeah. Well, let's hope that they get this all figured out and they get you guys coming back at least in a hybrid model here. I would, if I were to guess, and this is just my guess, but I would say within the next two weeks, you might you might be seeing yourself back at school a little bit. Royce. Hello. How are, how are you, buddy? Doing fine. Yeah, is this your first year? Um, actually, it's my second year of Park Search. Oh, wonderful. Well, welcome to the welcome to the school, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, we're not back to school, but hopefully we get there soon. Are you kind of having the same feelings as wanting to get back and out of the house? Yeah, I do. I think I think those are super normal feelings. We want to be we want to be interacting with our peers and uh, and learning at the same time. You know, new stuff. So give ourselves opportunities to make um, some transitions. Really important. Mm -hmm. Anything you anything you want to say to for the good of the of the whole team here? I got nothing to say. I, I... Have you have you developed some good friendships? Yeah. So who's your who's your top two? Don't have one. Oh, you don't have top twos. You got you got tons then, right? Tons of friends. I don't, I don't play. I don't do favoritism around here. I like everybody. Awesome job. I like it. I like it. Um, Eleanor. Yes. How are you? Good. How are you keeping busy? Doing good. What do you do? Um, learning. What are you, where yeah. are you learning? From your parents? Yeah. You spending a lot of time with your family? Yeah. Anybody not much. not much. You yeah. want to any you want to tell us anything important this morning? I'm anything no, new? I'm fine. Say it again. I'm fine. You're just fine. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, Yvonne. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. How is everybody? I'm good. I don't know if I remember you from last year. I know you, you, your staff have been been working. Are you been? Did you work in workability, or are you just off through 
Project Search. Last year I did Project Search. Okay. My first year, but then after, before that I was in a Laurel Rough. Oh, okay. All right. Um, did did um, were you there last year when uh, I, I think it was I'm thinking it was Kaiser came out and did the big uh, uh, presentation in the gym. Um. Well, we did a presentation in the gym last year, but it was um, it wasn't Kaiser's presentation. It was Project Search presentation. Yeah, we that's, did have a couple of people from Kaiser there. Yeah, it was it was toward the end of the year, right? Yes, I did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, was I was there. I was there for that, so I remember that. I was so okay, you were part of that team. Yes. Cool. Well, uh, good good to meet you, and um, nice to meet you too. Uh, we're gonna move on to Nathan. Nathan, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. I am definitely ready to come back to the classroom. Yeah, have you been doing? If you've been working uh, at all? Um, I've been here and there. Occasionally, I'll go mow lawn, stuff, but usually I'm kind of having a supernatural marathon because <laughs> I love my Winchester brothers. Uh, who's that? So basically, it's a TV show about two brothers uh, called, um, their names are Sam and Dean. Oh, they, you supernatural. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I have watched, I have watched every single episode ever yeah. done. Yeah. Oh, um, this is, I, this is last season. They didn't finish the last season, did they? No, they're still come, making eight more episodes, I believe, oh. because when they left off, it kind of was like, it was bizarre because it wasn't like necessarily a terrible ending, but it was kind of confusing because it's like a metaphor for Jack couldn't kill God, so pretty much everybody died. But apparently that wasn't the last episode. They're still making about like eight more, which they're done filming. Now they just have to put them out. Uh, I just want to give you an underpinning and then we'll move on to Clad. But I think that I've all, all along since the very beginning of that show, think that Sam is going to have some major role in this whole thing. <laughs> Probably, yeah, no, because it was interesting because the way I got into it was that um, I went over to my uh, grandparents' house. This was back when I was in uh, early high school, I think it was. And I saw this TV show my grandpa was uh, watching. I was like, this is cool. <laughs> He's doing Ghostbusters. What's this show? And he goes, it's called Supernatural. I was like, ooh. So yeah. I started it, and then I fell in love with it afterwards. I'm just like, this is one of the best TV series I think I've ever watched. Well, for those of you who've been watching it for all the years, it's like you were a little kid when that that show first started. I think they're in their 16th season, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's an amazing show. I really like it, too. Well, yeah. fellow, fellow Supernatural, I'm looking forward to those last last eight as well. We'll be, we'll be watching it together. Oh yeah, definitely. Hey, so, Clad. Huh? How are you doing? Oh, you want to hear from me? Yeah, of course I do. Always. <clears throat> well, for one, I am enjoying this type of homeschool life. Although really? Is, although it'll take a bit of get bit of readjusting to get used to, but it's something I'm not I'm not totally not used to. Well. Uh, that kind of surprises me because you're pretty, you know, gregarious. You're out there. You're always meeting with a lot of people. And, and oh yeah, I usually am. Yeah. Are you still able to to keep in touch with people while you're at home? Have you been um, Have you been chatting, video chatting, or FaceTiming people, or done anything like that with your classmates? Mm, nah, I'd say no, no. Not even your gaming friends. Been... Huh? No, no, I, I keep up with them. Yeah, I figured you'd be, be online gaming. Yeah, I do that a lot. Yeah. Now that I've given them home all the time, I have a lot more freedom. Well. With what I wear and with what I do. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at your. I look at uh, Tyler and Sam and you, and you guys all have the same shirts on. Is that through Project Search? Well. Sherry gave us three, and she gave us three options: blue, red, or more. Well, this is more of a burgundy. Oh, I purple. see. Yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And I know yeah. she. I know she said that you guys are supposed to put up your hands and and do do that. I, I'm all for that too. But if you're raising your hand just on the screen like Nathan's doing, that's perfectly fine too. I'll, with the staff's help, we'll keep. We'll keep. If you raise your hand, we'll try to go to you that way. Okay. 
Yeah, you can, we can do that, or we can just press the option that allows us to raise our hand. Exactly. But where is it? So I saw a hand from Nathan real quick. Before we get to Jonathan, uh, one hand from Nathan, and then Eleanor, did you have your hand up too? Yeah. Okay, we'll come. We'll go. We'll go Nathan, and then Eleanor, and then we'll go to Jonathan. If any other hands come up after that, we'll answer those questions then. Nathan. Um, I actually was just. Uh, it's kind of unrelated, but I was gonna throw out there. There's also another supernatural fan in here. <laughs> And who's that? Miss Yvonne. Oh, Miss Yvonne. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yes. The thing about me and Miss Yvonne is that we literally like connect brains. Kind of uh -huh. like almost like me and her are almost very similar, but not quite exactly the same, but we are very similar. Well, if I if we get back to campus and I'm on a sub and we'll have to sit during lunch and have lots of discussions about, about them because I I'm a diehard fan. I know yeah. both of you guys like superheroes, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, big time. Oh, yeah. I, I'm part of Marvel and, <clears throat> and uh, Marvel uh, Universe and all that other stuff. I, I literally almost spent 45 bucks for a big gigantic book that told, told the whole history. And I thought, you know, if I buy this book, I'm going to get into it so bad that I, I that's not good yeah. for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that. It was a big coffee book, right? Coffee table books. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's all pictures. I would, oh, it's got I, I saw many that. pictures, that and it's, sure. it's got a whole history of kind of like way back to the comics in the early yeah. 30s and stuff. It's just amazing. But oh, I just yeah. was fearful I'd get into that and never get out. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to throw out there that I actually have that book, and I also have a giant, um, or not a giant, but a DC guide of every single character inside the DC universe. <laughs> Yes, Marvel and DC universes. That's how, they, and they're rightly so. They call them universes because that's about what it's like. It's oh, almost, man. you know, when I was your age, we had a universe like that, and it was called um, the Realm, which was J.R. Tolkien's um, realm, uh, the Hobbit, and that was the same kind of thing. You could really get involved in that. I read every single one of Tolkien's books and um started reading some of the the uh some of his universe as well it's it's pretty in, intense and i'll tell you what it's it's great reading um if you really want to find out the imagination of people is it's just phenomenal so that's a good reading to to look up as tolkien's work eleanor yeah yeah you had your hand raised did you want to say something um no i'm fine Oh, you were just raising your hand to show me that you could? Yeah. Okay. All right. Last but not least, absolutely never least, Jonathan, how are you doing? Uh, what have you been doing? What have you been doing at home? Are you helping your mom cook? Uh, yes. What do you cook? A lot of food. What kinds? Where's it? Uh, chicken. Oh, lots of chicken. Do you guys, uh, what's your favorite thing to uh, have as a big family uh, meal? What's your favorite? Does your, does your mom have a big family recipe on tamales? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's one of my favorites. That's 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 one of uh, one of uh, my favorite. I had lots of friends that were Hispanic, and they one of the things that they they just prided themselves on was their tamales. They they make all kinds of. Uh, special recipes. It was always handed down from family to family to generation to generation. Those tamales are great. And I think, did I go through everybody? Did I miss anybody? What about the staff? Okay, let's go to the staff real quick, and then we're gonna we're gonna try to get to our, our lesson here. Um, Miss Sue, how are how are you keeping yourself busy? Teaching Zoom with the students. <laughs> and that's it? Sure. 
Uh, pretty much. That keeps me busy. I mean, it's the smoke and everything. It's so hard to go outside and do anything. Yeah. Although today, today on the app, it said we've got fresh air. So I hope everybody gets a chance to breathe some of that. I went golfing yesterday and it was started out real well in the morning, but by the afternoon, it was really bad. Yeah. I'm a golfer too. So is Devin. Oh, Devin, where are you? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. So do, have you been out golfing? See, you didn't tell me. That's, that's really important news to me. I'm a big time golfer. That's why I do I I was golfing for like, Seven years. Where Where do you go? Um, Hagen Oaks. Oh yeah, and that's that that golf course has been open the entire time during the pandemic. So I've been going there a lot. Well, good. I'm glad to know that you're a golfer. We'll have something to talk about. <laughs> Back to Sue. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, that's okay. That's about all I got. Thank okay. you, though. Uh, Yvonne. Um, I already went, so you need to go to John next. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We've been ever since, just because, uh, even though there's smoke, we, uh, we went to Santa Cruz this weekend, uh, just see my wife's uncle. So we've been trying to keep busy and things and, uh, uh, I'm just doing things around the house. Uh, like Nathan said, I've been mowing the lawn and doing some yard work and, stuff like that awesome nothing super special but uh I'm just trying to survive yeah that's about that's about what it is just like i was telling everybody in class you got to keep yourself busy with something i've had uh three very large projects and it's got me to thinking about it this afternoon i'll see if i can pull up some of the pictures of what i've been working on this afternoon i'll share those with you guys if you're interested i i built a carport never built a carport before and i built one um, just finished it uh, about two weeks ago. So, hey, Andrew. And what is a carport? So um, I have a garage and my house was built in 1964. And so when they built garages back then, they called them two car garages, but they're really not two car garages. Uh, they're, they're really narrow. So if you have anything that you need to store in the garage or need a workbench in there, you can't park two cars. So I have a large driveway. So I park my truck out in the driveway. Well, it gets beat up by the sun, rain, wind, and, you know, the whole element. So I decided to build a carport for my truck. So it at least be covered from all the elements. So, um, and I didn't want it to look, you know, I go by people's houses and I see some people's carports are made out of metal and they just don't look all that attractive. And I, I did, I mm. just put it off year after year because I, I was afraid of building something and I didn't want it to be a monstrosity in the neighborhood. So I, uh, I kept looking and looking online at different types of things that were out there that were kits. And you st I still had to spend lots of money to, even to get a kit to build one. So I designed my own and then I built it myself. So that's been a good project for me to keep me busy. Yeah. All right, guys, are we, we've done enough talking. We got to move on with our lesson here. We do have to do something related to school. Um, and I'm going to pull it up on my, so um, this is, this lesson. I sent you, um, I sent you the doc again on, um, I sent it rich text format. I don't know if that helps, but I sent it to your email. Oh, okay. Your school email. So I don't know if you can pull it up that way. Well, I, I've got it pulled up on, on what I finally found it from uh, Sherry that she sent, but, um, I don't, I really don't know. I found it on my iPad, uh, but I don't know how to get it into a into something that everybody can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read them off. Um, on, and it's called, what would you do? And it has to do with your work environment and the situations that you might run into out in your, the workforce. Um, some of these are pretty, pretty straightforward and true. I've, I've actually experienced some of these things myself. So um, we'll talk 
If you have input, remember, raise your hand before you don't talk over anybody. But if you do have something really important, pop that hand up and we'll try to we'll try to call on you as quickly as we can. OK, so let's see everybody's hand that's that's watched the show. What would you do? Just me. Uh, Tyler's watch. What would you do on TV? Eleanor's seen it. Just three. Oh, there's Devin's seen it. So it's a show that comes on TV, thanks guys, that um, they go out in the community like a restaurant, mostly restaurants and they'll, or bars, and they will put you in a scenario where, um, you know, somebody's either mistreated or bullied or they're doing something within that, that social environment. And what they do is they videotape it and see the surrounding people. They put actors together and they do the do, do these scenarios, and then they see what the people around those characters in those environments do to react. And that's why they came up with a thing called "What Would You Do?" So they want to see what would people do in those situations. So those of you who've seen the show, you know it's pretty straight, basically the way I described it. But um, if you haven't seen it, it's the reactions and then they go after they meet, they do the scenario and then they see people's reactions. They go and talk to them about their feelings about the, what they just experienced. <clears throat> so Ms. Sherry's kind of kind of come up with a, a virtual, uh, what would you do here? So the first one um, is a patient comes to you for help. So this, I'm assuming this might be that you're working at, at Kaiser or, or some medical office or something. And a patient comes to you for help and you're already helping someone else. What do you do? What's the appropriate social situation? What would your social response be? Uh, Natasha? Um, probably wait when you're done helping the other patient and help them a little later, maybe, or you can ask some other staff member to help them. I like the idea of getting another staff member. What would you tell them in that situation? Would you just, you uh, know, ask them to wait or would you uh, say, let them me to wait? Uh huh. Yeah. I'd mm -hmm. ask them to wait. Okay. What would the what would, staff member for them to help me? Let's kind of role play that. What would you? What would be the exact words that you would use? Um, I'm just trying to think about it right now. Okay, Andrew, you want to give it a shot? Exact yeah. words? Anybody? Come on, Nathan. I know what you would say. You're a very polite guy. I think that you would politely ask them to wait. What would you say? With the customer right now? Uh, say it again because he didn't come in right away. Okay, I was going to say, uh, I would say, can you please, uh, can you please wait? I'm with the customer right now. Okay. All right. Any of the staff? Oh, Jordan left. And now... Jordan's back. Got you, Jordan. Got you back. Um, how about you could say, could you wait for a moment until I finish with the customer? Uh, Natasha mentioned that she could get somebody else to help. You could tell that customer, just like you said, you'd say, oh, could you hold just a minute? I'll see if I can find somebody to help you. Otherwise, I'll be with you in a minute, right? That would be the polite thing to do is because when people wait, they get impatient, don't they? And if you don't recognize them, that makes it worse because they don't even feel like they're being recognized. And there's nothing worse than not being recognized, right? So if you tell them that you see them and that you're, that you're going to help them or you'll get somebody to help them, they'll wait patiently and they won't be rude. And that's the thing that you want to let them know that you're, you know, that they're there and you're, you're going to do something for them. Good job. Number two, you can't remember how to do a part of your job and your supervisor is really busy. What do you do? 
you can't remember how to do a certain part of your job and you need some help and your supervisor's busy, what do you do? Excuse me, Royce. John. Royce? Oh, how about ask one of your coworkers? They, since they did work with you, they could remind you how you do it. Absolutely. Andrew. So what was the scenario again? So you're you're on the job and you get to a part where you don't remember how to do it and your supervisor's not there to help you, what would you do? I would ask um, someone if they overheard the conversation with the supervisor. Okay. Tyler? I do something that is productive that you do know how to do at the time. Awesome. Yeah, that's really thinking outside the box. And then your John? supervisor. Can I say something? Who is it? John. Jordan, I need you to be at your a desk or a table or something, okay? Jordan, you do not fold laundry during classroom. You know better than that. And you need to stay off your phone and stay in the class. Yeah, we lost you. We we missed we want your input, okay, sweetie? Okay, thank you. So, so um, somebody else had their hand. Was it Eleanor? I can't remember. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate it. So, um, ask one of your other uh, one of what, one of your coworkers is what I'm hearing. Um, you would go and do something else. That's that's thinking outside the box. Your if your supervisor comes to you and says, "Hey, why didn't you do the job?" You say, "Well." I wanted to keep busy and I didn't know how to do that part and there was nobody else to help me. So I just wanted to keep busy. They're less likely to give you a hassle, right? Right, Tyler? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Now that you're on the opposite end, you're on you're on a job and you're you're kind of a mentor. Uh or you're you're there's a mentor that, that's working with you. But when they work with you, they're like really loud when they snap sound oops what happened oh there we go who who, who found that oh john see, i did i put yeah. it in chat for you but i guess you didn't see it i don't uh, know yeah you know. i was too busy talking there you go everybody can see that of uh, sue shared her screen can everybody see it mm -hmm. yeah i can see it okay so since sue's sharing screen we're all going to have to help her with uh because you're your video goes off to the side and you can't see everybody. If we don't see your hand, just you just holler out if, um, if we don't call on you when we get to the end of a question and we haven't called, we, we think that we've finished with everybody raising their hand, okay? So it's number four says, your mentor is a person who talks very loud and sounds angry most of the time. He or she was has told you that you have to get better at your job. You're not sure what he or she means about getting better on the job, what do you do? Slightly um, advocate for yourself and uh, politely ask her what, uh, what, or they in this general, because it be male or female, um, what, uh, what you could do to improve yourself better at that job. Awesome. Is that easy to do? No, it is not. No, it is not. But you know what? Uh, people respect maturity, and I think that and and responsibility. And you're showing both of those if you are being an advocate for yourself and speaking up. Very good, Nathan. Anybody else? Nathan, you can put your hand down now. Your little emoji hand. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, you don't like your job. What should you do? Um, I was wondering. Well, sorry, I see Royce with his hand up now. And then somebody else was talking. Who was that? So, Royce, go ahead. Well, if you don't like your job, but if but you want to get the money for it, you have to toughen up and just do what you had to do. Because if you try to switch your job, but it might be on your resume forever, and people will not hop 
higher because you just quit at that certain job like like a day or so. Yeah, that's very true. They will look at that resume when somebody else is trying to hire you. Very, very true. Um, yeah, sometimes you do have to tough it out. I, I'll tell you, things have changed over the years. When I was your age, we hardly ever left our job. We always toughed it out. Um, we didn't leave jobs, but you know, I saw a survey recently that it said that the average, uh, the average time that somebody stays in a job uh, for millennials, uh, that generation is five years. And that kind of blew me away when it used to be you'd be in a job for 10 or 20 years before you decided to move on. So times are changing a little bit, but yeah, a couple of days, a week, two weeks, a month, that's probably too short a time, huh, Royce? Um, number eight, your colleagues are talking about going out to lunch. They haven't invited you and you really want to go. What do you do? See Royce's hand. I don't see a lot of other people's. Is there anybody out there staff that has their hand up besides Royce? Devin does. Devin? And then we'll go then we'll go to Royce. Well, he has a little mic. We, we can barely hear him. Yeah, get closer, Devin. I think it's his headphones, it's a problem. I mean uh, uh Devin, when you're answering, maybe you could take the headphones off and just do it via computer and then go back. Or you can just type it in the chat. Up to. Okay. So we'll, while you're doing that, Royce, go ahead. Um. Well, if you, even though I don't want people to invite, invite me or I want to go, man, but me personally, I just like to eat by myself or ask, ask personally, can I go with you? They say no, you can go. Yes, yes, you can join them. I just need to ask. Is that easy? I mean, I mean you, don't, you don't know, just ask. Yeah, for some people that might be very hard to do, but I, I agree with you. I think that you have to advocate for yourself. And, I mean, and your colleagues, okay, your friends. Do you want? Are you scared to ask your friend you want to join them? Yeah, or what if they're not your friends? What if they're new people that you want to get to know? Still, you don't know unless you ask. You can't, you can't get in life without asking. You got it. I love that. I love that attitude. And that's 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 very true. You got to ask. Otherwise, you just you will always be a question mark, won't you? Number nine. Uh, is there? Oh, I wanted to come back. Who was uh, Devin? Did we figure out? This as well when I type in chat. Yeah, has he added anything to chat yet? Let me check. Oh, let's see. Da, 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 da. So not, nothing, nothing from Devin. I don't see it in chat either. You want to pass? You want to pass, what is Devin? Andrew doing? Question mark. I heard that too. Mm. Andrew, you keep moving the camera back and forth. It's very distracting. My bad. Thank you. If I have to, I'll move it to a certain spot where it won't move. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to number nine. I, I, I'm i sorry, Devin, if we didn't get your answer. I apologize. We'll come back to it if you get it into chat for us. I'm sorry we're not able to hear you. Um, you are talking to a colleague. They are not answering you. 
and are looking down at their work, what do you do? Hmm. Lad? Huh? Can you repeat that? Yeah, you're you're talking. Do you see your screen? Yeah. We're doing number I, nine. Okay, I can see it. Okay. You and your colleagues. Saying you are looking down at your work. What do you do? I recommend that you either tap their shoulder. Or you try to grab their attention. Okay. Or if not, then you can just go back to doing your own work. You could. And we don't know. We don't have a lot of information on this one. If it's in the middle of the day and you're all working, they could Some be ignoring you. quite vague. Yeah, they could be ignoring you and doing their work, which yeah. isn't really, that's not really polite. But at No, the same but it's not really a bad thing either since well, yeah. they're just doing their work. Exactly. So you have to know the situation um, in order to decide whether or not you're going to press forward with trying to get their get their attention, right? Yeah, but here we have too little information, so we can't. There is no nothing to really happen. Right. So the the answer depends on what what's the scenario, what what additionally is in the scenario, what, what's going on mm -hmm. in the workplace, and so on and so forth. Yeah, definitely. Anybody exactly. else comment? Royce? Uh, uh, if, if, well, if we're talking to a colleague who's not really paying attention, even though that they need to focus on what, what we are talking about, is it something big, something dangerous about our boss? We need to get our uh, colleague's attention. But it was just like a conversation thing, and they're busy. I just personally leave them alone. Yeah. Yeah. We just have to know what's going on at the time. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Number 10. Uh, your colleagues are discussing another worker, someone else in the office or wherever you are, and you realize that they're making fun of that person. What do you do? Would there go to that person or those people and talk to them on their level and then try not necessarily reason, but talk to them and say that's not right. And ex not necessarily explain, well, I guess you can explain why, but if they don't listen to you, then you can take it to the boss because at that point you're not being a tattletale because you tried talking to that person, but those people, or those people, but those people didn't listen or they can't be uh, reasoned with, so you take it to the boss. Okay, Jonathan, do you agree or disagree? Do you agree or disagree? I know I'm putting you on the spot. I remember, I'm always working on getting you to talk, aren't I? <laughs> Jordan, you got can't be on your phone. So do you agree? Do you agree with Nathan, Jonathan, or disagree? I would agree. You would agree? I think that's very wise. I think he gave us kind of two different perspectives on it too, and that that helps. Anybody else on that one? Andrew? Um, I mean, if they're making fun of the other person, I would ask them to stop making fun of them. If that doesn't work, take it up to the next step, which is supervisor. So yeah, you agree then. Yeah. Um, put this out to everybody is it, all of these scenarios, are they easy or difficult? They're not easy at all. No, I think, go ahead. I was going to say they're difficult um, on different levels because some may um, not find some uh, so difficult, but me personally, or me anyway, one of the things that I'm working on is like, People say I'm a chatty dude, but actually, I have a hard time advocating for myself sometimes. 
Why do, why do you think we have a hard time advocating for ourselves, everybody? I can think of one word. Jordan, what do you think? It's hard because some of us, because we're all special needs and we all have a disability and some of us with our disability have a hard time advocating for ourselves. Why, why, why do you think, Jordan, that that's difficult? Because if you don't advocate for yourself, you can't get help. That's true. That's why we say to advocate. But why is it difficult for, for you think, why do you think it's difficult for people with disabilities to advocate for themselves? Because they were either not, because either they were not taught, hey, just because you're different, doesn't mean you can still advocate for yourself or they or they're scared to advocate for themselves because they're afraid they're not going to get help. They're afraid. I, I, I love it that you told us about that word, that word that I was looking for you used, And the word is fear or afraid. And I want to tell you that you don't just have to have a disability to have that feeling when you're advocating for yourself. That is a feeling that every single one of us experience. And one of the disadvantages of having a disability is, is that people underestimate you. And so it becomes even more important for you to advocate for yourself because they don't, there's times that they don't think that you can do what you can do. And you advocating for yourself proves that you can, right? So it's something that you guys have to work on every day and and press forward, um, probably even more so than some of us, some of us, you know. So it's it's a very admirable skill to advocate. It's not an easy one to do, but it's something that is definitely necessary for you guys to be recognized and to be able to do much more in life that other people might not think that you can do. And so it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's something that we always talk about in school. We talk about advocating a lot, don't we? Um, seems like every day mm -hmm. at school, we're always talking about advocating for one another. Um, it's, it's a fine line, <laughs> you know, uh, it's a, it's walking that fine line of fear, I call it, because you've got to be able to, to have kind of a thick skin and be able to say, you know, no matter what they tell me, I got to press forward. Any any comments to that? You hit the nail right on the mark. Yeah, that's all I can say. Awesome, Cloud. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think that that it's uh, if if we can teach you anything as 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 teachers and and support staff, that's that's the big one right there. Is that that uh, you you got to kind of conquer that fear. And be be okay to be uncomfortable. You hear that a lot too, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not easy to feel uncomfortable, but you kind of have to do it. Um, you know, when I if I if I can just use me as an example, like you know, I could take retirement and sit at home and not do anything, and and it's not easy for me to come into a classroom and and lead a lesson or do these kinds of things because you know this computer stuff and and using you know, Microsoft Teams and Zoom and Google Classroom and all those things, it's, it, you know, I have to learn that over again. It's been many years since I used Classroom and obviously Zoom and, and uh, uh, you know, those kind of things, it's, it, it, it keeps popping up and it's, it's not easy. Um, Sam, thank you for putting in the chat. You had your hand up. Let's go to you. I was gonna comment on number eleven about the uh, language. By co if a coworker be and probably on a language, I I would say you got to watch out what you say to other people. Would you go into any more detail than that with them? No, I will let the boss. I will let the manager take care of it. 
Right. If it continued, or would you would you tell the boss, even at even if you hadn't talked to him? Yeah. Yeah. Saying that he's using an inappropriate language. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think it's always good to go to the person that you have the issue with. Again, an uncomfortable feeling, but you got to yeah. go to the person that your colleague first, and then you go to your boss. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for uh, putting mm -hmm. in the chat there. That really helps me because I don't see everybody. And when you pop up in chat and let me know that you got your hand raised, um, yeah, that helps a lot. I appreciate that, Sam. Yep. All right. Uh, we are, what time is it? 10? We got 20 yeah. minutes left. Okay, we got Sorry to minutes. interrupt here again. Jordan, is that the way we were supposed to wear our uniforms? I don't know what's up with you today. But it doesn't seem like you're very focused in class. Thank are you. you. Are you okay? Are you uncomfortable? Jordan? Are you, can you hear me? Okay. All right, let's move on um, to number 12. If it's right. there. You have a 12. Uh, nope, 12. No, 12. No, 12. That's it. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I kind of said my piece. I kind of said my piece on all of these, and that is that in every single one of those scenarios, I think um, we have to deal with, with the word fear. And in all of those, pretty much all of those scenarios, you have to advocate. You have to step out of your comfort zone, and you got to be willing to talk with people about how you're feeling. Um, and that's not just in the job world. I think that's, it's, it's in any social situation, you've got to try to do that as best you can. Uh, we all struggle with it. We're all working on it. And so you guys aren't alone. Um, we're, we're right there with you. Um, any, anything else for the good of the group? Nathan? I was also going to throw out there, uh, you don't know what you can do until you try, because that's one of the greatest things that uh, Jacob taught me at Laurel Ruff when I was in his um, his business class was that he realized, like, he helped me understand the fact of when you focus, you um, that I'm a lot better at things than I know kind of thing. Awesome. Uh, Thank that, you for your input. And that's another great lesson that I learned from Miss Sherry too. Awesome. Anybody else? Hmm. Natasha? I was going to say you learn more and then you succeed faster. Learn. So like when you're working on a job, you, you try to learn as much as you possibly can about it? Is that what you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I mean for anywhere. And, and your bosses will probably recognize you a lot quicker about what your skills are, your skill levels are, huh? Yep. Anybody else? All right. Well, um, let's. Mm -hmm. Prep what we're going to do. Zoom tried to quit on me, so I see people still there, so hang on. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, it yelled at me saying, hey, Google disappeared. Um, Okay, so the journal prompt for this afternoon, you guys, oops, what's that? I have it on Google Classroom. There it is. I think this is it. So the journal prompt for 922 was one, uh, one day, one of Justin's coworkers knocked over a product display. Boxes were scattered all over the floor. Justin was working close by. He ignored the scattered boxes 
and left his workstation to tell others what happened. If you were the coworker who knocked over the display, what would you have said to Justin? So that's your that's your right for today. We're not we're not going to talk about it right now, but that's for your right your journal right for this afternoon. And according to Sherry, you guys already got that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just make sure that you have that ready for this afternoon for us to discuss. Um, what else? What do you? What else do you guys cover in the afternoon? Yeah, it's usual checkup. It's usual check in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you guys usually do when you finish finish a lesson with about ten or fifteen minutes left over? Huh. That's that's a great question, Natasha. Natasha, you had your hand up. Uh, we usually put in our input and see which uh, we have our input and explain about the less our the journal prompt when we're done with it. Usually. Oh, okay. That's for this afternoon. Okay. okay. All right. Um, we can go around and check and see if everybody's in proper uniform today. Okay, I see blue and I see, per actually, Royce, is that a purple or is that a blue? It's just coming in on your screen, purple? Purple. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's so red. Everybody needs to wear a watch too, right? Did everybody wear their watch today? Yep, you uh, got watch. Done. Not me. Jonathan, do you have a watch on? I don't. <laughs> Jonathan. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, Jordan. Eleanor's got hers. <laughs> so, so I take it that what Miss Sherry does is when you come in to do the the Zoom, that um, that it's like going into the job, right? Yeah. That's what I'm taking away from. Yeah. You, so you got to be prepared. So you got to have your work shirt, your watch. What else does she say to bring with you? But what? A belt. A belt. Oh, a belt. Gotcha. A belt. Yep. And you know what? Jordan advocated for herself um, last week, right, Jordan? Last week. Do you want to tell, will you want to share with them um, what you advocated the whole class for? Oh, um, I advocated because we're a booster, we have shoes, but I felt like since we were at home, we. We, did, we shouldn't wear shoes while at home because we're home. And if we go anywhere, we can put them on. But if we're doing Zoom at home and they can't see our feet, and it doesn't, then it, Sherry made a rule where if we want, we can wear shoes. But if we don't, we don't have to. Okay. Right. Yeah, because you advocated and we had a whole classroom debate because of your idea, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So even like though it. we can't, we don't have to wear shoes, Jordan. We shouldn't see them on the screen, okay? Oh. <laughs> that, your bare feet that makes sense, right? Point out, yeah, literally, no we can see your foot. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you know what, uh, Jordan? I'll have to say, Jordan, if I could sit like that, I would try to sit like that. My my knees won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You just say no. Oh boy, you guys are you guys are so good. You're so you're great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, one of the things that you got to do when you go to work is you got to be prepared. Um, I generally will try not to wear my watch um, unless I'm working, and I and I have a clock near me, so I, I'll I'll do the clock instead, but. Uh, yeah, normally if I go out and I leave the house, I'm always putting my watch on because I, I don't, you didn't, you never know when you're going to be in a situation where you're going to need to tell time. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy, but, and then you get a lot of people asking you, how much time do we have before we're, our shift's over? And it's like, okay, I got to look at my watch to find out, right? Yeah. Andrew. Um. Yeah, just to let you guys know, I might be looking around pretty much most of the time since I have housekeepers here now. So, 
Okay. Just FYI. All right. Right. That's fine. Okay. Well, here we are in this down downtime. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me think here. I think about my old school days and what we used to do when we had some downtime. I'd always have a bag of tricks up my sleeve. Let's see. Um, okay, here's one. <laughs> yep, I always had a bag of tricks up up my sleeve. Here's one. Um, who? And and it's this is a vocabulary uh, a vocabulary. You know, you you guys all know about Where's Waldo, right? Yeah. Everybody played Where's Waldo. Yeah, once in my life. Okay, so in Where's Waldo, you have to find certain things that they want you to find in the picture, but they're very well hidden, and so you have to you have yeah. to really search around for them. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, from all of your screens, I'm going to find something, and then you guys got to find you got to find that object. All right. So um, this person has a, and I'm going to use a vocabulary word. They have a montage in their background so you have to be familiar with the word montage what is a montage nathan uh a montage is uh another word for like trilogy or something like that i think it is say it again Another word I for said, what? I think it's like trilogy, like a collection of like like seasons. Oh, collection. More, more than what? Yeah. Anybody have a anybody have a dictionary around that they could look? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have a Webster's one, but I don't know if it's still. Mon Mon quite old. Montage, the, pro the process or technique of selecting, editing, and piecing together a separate text of film to form a continuous whole. Uh, yep. That's it. I couldn't hear him, so what did he say? Who can who can summarize? I I can read it again. I can read it again. Okay, try it again. Montage, the process or technique of selecting, editing, and piecing together sep separate sections of film to form a continuous whole. Okay, so it's it has to do with selection of different things, different um, uh, photos that are all meshed together. Who has that? Anybody see it? Uh, Nathan. I'm gonna guess. Is it me? Good try. No. I I gotta guess. It's Clad. Me. Clad. Where is he now? Me. And again, I'm seeing what I see, which I'm seeing what I see, which is a small screen. So I may I may be misinterpreting what I see in the background, but it looked like a montage to me. Uh, Sam. Hmm. You talking about Andrew? Uh, I thought about yeah. his too. I thought about his too, but I I was going to use a different term for his and another one. So I <laughs> that gave that away. But no, it's not Andrew. Nathan has his hand up. Uh, Nathan. Is it Mr. Platts? Mr. Platts. Yes, it is. Good guess. And and, and that's hard because I don't know if it's a montage, but behind you, Tyler, on that wall behind you, is that a bunch of pictures all joined that's together the up there on that board? Yeah, I made that when I was a kid. There you go. Good job. That is a montage. Good, good deal. Yes, Andrew. That is it's also, I mean, it, I don't think he ever mentioned it, but it's a billboard. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, I got another one. And this one, hmm, there are, I'm going to give this, give this to, 
two two people and it it's it could possibly be three but it, i'm going to really focus and and hold that word of tapestry to its full meaning so who has tapestries in their background hmm. nathan Andrew and Miss Yvonne. You got one. I, and that's the, you know what? That was my other one. I wasn't quite sure of Miss Yvonne's if it was an actual tapestry or if it was just a, um, uh, I guess you could still have to call it a tapestry, wouldn't you? Because it's made out of cloth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say that's probably a tapestry. There's one more. Who's the other one? Is it Sam? You got it. Sam's the other one. You have a tapestry behind you as well. Good job. Okay, this is going to be really, this is going to be really tricky. Those this are flowers. Yeah, a tapestry of flowers. That's right. Okay, this person has a wooden sculpture. Who has a wooden sculpture in their background? Nobody? Mm -mm. Glad? I don't think so. That's, I almost, I almost was going to say Andrew, but that's not a sculpture, right? Mm. It's wood, it's, it's not a sculpture. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a wooden, wooden thing. I'll, okay. Should I give it away? Nobody can guess? I got it. Miss Sue? Um, you do, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, uh, I don't know what that was. No. So I got, this, I got this in Hawaii. And it is flying turtles. Die. Wow, that's cool. cool. Okay. That cool. is nice. Very cool. Yeah, Very they're made cool. out of. Um, it's made out of the, the the wood that's commonly found in Hawaii. And I've and I just spaced it in my head what it was. I had it in a second ago, and I forgot what kind of wood it's. It's all, the only kind of wood that you can find is, is found in Hawaii that they use to sculpt it. How did you take it on the plane safely without um, breaking it? That's a good question. I'll show you. So each of these pieces comes off. Oh, okay. Then they have a hole where it attaches to a dowel on the top of the wooden thing. And then, and then we just wrapped them up. Oh, okay. In bubble wrap. I always think about things like that. <laughs> yeah, well, I do too. I always wonder yeah. that stuff too. And then that that has a little baby one that comes with it too. So cute. Squirt. That was totally awesome, Squirt. <laughs> you rock. Oh, is that from <laughs> Squirt? Is that from a a, a Disney movie? It is. It, yeah. Uh, that's finding that. Dory. <laughs> I think it was yeah. Finding Nemo, find, actually. Finding, oh, Nemo, Finding Nemo. <laughs> Dory. <You're welcome. laughs> Dory, what? Oh, you guys wow. and your TV your TV trivia, man. You guys got it down. Movies, but yeah. Well, it was good. It was good spending time with you guys today. I appreciate your um, participation. I really appreciate your participation, and I also appreciate um, your friendly faces. I love to see the smiling faces. And I will see you today at 2.20, correct? That's right. 
All right. You guys have a great afternoon. And staff, if you want to hang around and touch base with me just for a quick second. Yeah. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Larry. Bye. 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 Bye.